Hey, hey, hey. Can you hear me? Kai, can you hear me? I can hear you. Fantastic. And are we all, all going live through our various media channels? I do believe we are live, yes. Woohoo! Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome to the Nick and Gene Show, where we talk about everything in the nerdverse. Spoiler warning in case we happen to spoil anything about Falcon and the Winter Soldier or Invincible or anything else we're going to talk about tonight. You have been warned. Yes, you have. You have been warned. And as usual, it's just another Manic Monday here in the nerd world. And the Marvel gods blessed us this morning with a new Shang-Chi trailer. Yeah, it wasn't that kind of it wasn't that amazing. I was not expecting that at all. That was a bit crazy, wasn't it? Sorry, I do apologize to anyone who's watching me uh, watching this on our YouTube or Twitch channels. I did some really bad karate moves there. Honestly, I have taken karate classes, just not that many. Sorry. But yeah, yeah, the Sang Chi channel was pretty cool, wasn't it? What do you think of it? Um I loved it. I'm like so excited to see it now. Like uh, and I for Marvel to give us a whole two minutes, over two minutes uh, of just brand new footage we've never seen. Of a character that basically hardly anybody's ever heard of, to be honest, as well, because Shang-Chi was born out of the 70s exploitation movie stuff. So basically, because like, like of Bruce Lee, Lee, cause, cause of Bruce Lee Shang-Chi Lee. exists. Yeah. But yeah, it was. Uh, I thought it was interesting. I enjoyed it. In fact, if you didn't actually run the Marvel credits at the very, very beginning, you might have just thought it was just a uh, typical uh, Hong Kong action flick. To be honest, true. So, but yeah, I, I enjoyed the heck out of it. Have no idea who the actor is, but apparently he's extremely big in, in in Hong Kong action movies and that type of thing. So I'm I'm looking forward to see how this one turns out. Again, uh, Marvel are turning things on the head and basically giving this this weird mix of superheroes and basically this martial arts stuff we have a character to be fair 90 percent of the mcu fans have probably never heard of before and i've only ever think i've had one comic with him in, and he was a team up with black widow yeah and in this iteration he is go he is the mandarin son and we get oh. to see the real mandarin the fake <laughs> mandarin not the, the not, not, not the fake Mandarin called Dennis, right? Exactly. Repeated so, by actor yeah. extraordinaire ben, King, ben Kingsley. That's Dennis the Mandarin, not the real Mandarin. Yes. Yeah. But no, I um, enjoyed it. Sorry, I'm sorry. Please go ahead. No, go ahead. Okay. Well, I enjoyed it because basically we saw we saw like a mix of stars. We saw some street fighting. We saw some traditional backdrop uh, fighting. We see see a lot of the. Um, uh, Japanese, so a lot, a lot of the Hong Kong Kung Fu movies, basically neon background type stuff, and also we had this strange fun, fun, fantasy sequence halfway through, like he was like jumping off the back of like a dragon or something, and it's mm -hmm. like they, they, they really took everything that Shang Chi and threw it into this movie. So I think we, I think we're in for a very interesting ride, and I'm looking forward to seeing how this one plays out. Because to be fair, it's, it's it, like the Guardians of the Galaxy, hardly anybody knows this character. So I want to see how he how you succeed succeed in film. Oh, this be phase five of the Marvel Universe now, or four? So four or five? I can't remember anymore. Are we, did we finish four? Or are we are we in four? We I should know these things. Why <laughs> you check on that while I'm talking? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. That, that's your way. But you're telling me to be quiet in a second too. Okay, I'll have, <laughs> I'll have a quick look. Um. I obviously the Mandarin's immortal and he's been around for a while because they show what looks to be flashbacks of him, a, a younger him battling and wearing these 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 rings five on each wrist. In the comics, they were actual like rings on your finger, but in the new MCU, they're you know bands on your arm. Which is cool. I'm 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 okay with that. And it looks like they kind of help him control the elements. Yeah, it's, it's similar to basically the, the ring powers and Mandarin Dam. I think the, the the bands actually make a more visual statement. So I think that's a good idea. I mean, by the way, we're in phase four, not phase five. Okay. So. okay. There we go. We have clarified. Yeah, yeah. Because the, the, 
the fight scenes and that they showed were just amazing looking. Like I can't wait to see more of those. Um, and apparently this happens like in between blips. This is supposed to occur after the snap and before the blip. Oh, okay. Okay. That would be strange, but let's go with that. So, I mean, so we get, yeah. Maybe we get to see how, what happened in the world in between. Because we're kind of already seen with Falcon and Winter Soldier and WandaVision after the blip. But we haven't seen a whole lot of yeah. during. So I, I get the feeling we get we get basically a lot of like prequel type movies coming from the, come from this phase. I mean, Black Widow is set after 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 Civil War, but before Infinity War. So Sanchi is set between Infinity War and uh, Endgame. Yes. No. Be we said between lips. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. That's right. You're right. You're correct. Oh, thank you, thank you. Hey, I'm going to record it. I got your white recording. Woohoo! I'm, I'm, I'm going to put that on audio. Never going to hear the end of this one now. Never. Never. But no, I, I enjoyed the trailer a lot. Um, it hit all the white beats. Um, I think it's. You I think, think we got. Sorry. The ten Please. rings are going to be now the like the infinity gems, like the infinity gauntlet. They're going to be um, the new thing that everybody's chasing. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I mean, they, I, it, the, the Mandarin's wings were powerful, but never in that basically reality altering sort of power band sort of way. But I guess we're going to find out, aren't we? I mean, you know, this whole thing is going to be related. We've got the Eternals popping up, which are basically celestial beings as well as a movie. And, it, and we've got basically, we have a very mystic, mystic mix to phase four. So uh, maybe it's all, all, all going to be combinated in the. Doctor Strange, multi multiverse of madness type stuff. They all start coming, all, all really coming together in there. So, but I, I think we're going very mystic this time. We're going to lean a lot on the on the mystic side of the Marvel of, of the Marvelverse. So, I think this is going to be this is going to be a good direction. So, the rings are going to be related to everything that's going on on that planes dimension scene. That you know. Oh, I'm strange. so excited for all that! So excited. Oh yeah, yeah, it's great. I mean, I, th I think I think we're in a very good place here, and I think af after all this all the science and technology and space opera we've had in the last three phases, it's kind of interesting to go down this slightly different route, which is also a very important part of the Marvel universe, but also but something very different to doing the MCU. MCU next, like, people are gonna have to go. How how do how do all the superhero technology and giant mecha and all that type of thing? And it's like, well, no, this mm -hmm. is this is just as important. What you're seeing here are going to be world-ending threats, but at a, at a very different level. So. And I believe um, we're going to be getting Thing Fang Foom. Ooh, Thing Fang Foom, Big Green Dragon. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, I'm like so excited to see how they do that. You know what? Uh, after Marvel pulled off a talking tree and a, and, a, and a raccoon with a machine gun, they can do anything. So. Well, yeah. That's why I'm so rich. excited to see what they come up with. Like, I can't wait. I'm just so excited. Are we going to get like a graceful like Chinese dragon thing, Fang Fu? Or are we going to get the big monstrous thing, Fang Fu, Fang Fu, the force into battle every second book? So that's an interesting question. I guess we'll find out, won't we? But no, no, no. I think no. I, I, I think I think we're in for an interesting way for this entire phase. I think Shang Chi is going to set up basically the directions they're going in. Um, if not, Black Widow do, does a little bit as well. So I think we, 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 we're going to go mystical and celestial and dimensional and all kinds of wacky stuff. Oh, time. yeah. We're, we're definitely going into other realms and, and other so power sets. sets. Very different power sets, very different to basically the, the fighter mice that we've been seeing, seeing like all, the flight, all the flights and ties. This is definitely a different direction. I'm and looking forward to it. I know because I love all that magic and fantasy and so that appeals to that side of me yeah oh no 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 i think that's great too i honestly do believe that's actually a great thing great thing as well i just i'm just i'm just kind of amazed because they, they have this what movies are kind of formula like basically technology is the big bad and that kind of thing and basically all the heroes so far have been basically science heroes for more for a better word mm -hmm. um so now we're basically going to going into in, into these mystical heroes and shang chi is going to be basically going to set the bar pretty high i think and i'm looking forward to this character 
Like I said, it's another character I virtually know nothing about because I've only ever seen him in one Black Widow book ever. Um, he's very interesting. He has definitely a legacy. He's trying to basically uphold and in many ways avoid all at the same time. So um, I think we, I think we're in for a good fun ride here. And Marvel's going to bring us yet again another different type of movie, which is going to be good as well. So. Oh yeah, and it shows that Marvel is is not that they they know what they're doing and they're not afraid to take chances. Well, at this point, if, 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 if these are the people that brought us the Guardians of the Galaxy, at, you know, after about five movies, oh hey guys, here's the talking raccoon and the, and, and, and and the uh, the giant tree. Uh, so I think after this point, I think you know what they can take chances, and it, and it's good that they are because you know flights and tights are fun, but there's a lot more to this Marvel universe than basic not the lot more universe than the basically they've we've seen so far. We have only really seen, to be honest, the B team stuff. So yeah, and when, and they've been. You know, planting the the ten ring seeds like we saw. You know, in Ant Man there was somebody from the ten rings with the tattoo. We saw them in Iron Man movies, and you know they're they're a big criminal organization. And it seems like that um, the Mandarin like trained the son to a certain age, and then was like, okay, well the next ten years you can spend how you like, but then time to come home. And now he's bringing him home, wanting him to take over the mantle as the Mandarin. But oh, he's also got a sister. Lines, yes. No, it's, it, I think it's, it's just going to be good. Um, I mean, it's. I think we're, we're, in for, we're in for a good fun ride here. I'm happy that Marvel are not just going to go in flights and tights for this phase. Um, and I think it's going to lead to an interesting Avengers, Avengers 5. But funny enough, the Ten Rings do link into Kang as well. So basically, we'll probably see a, a, a relation towards Kang. As, so, you know, we, we're basically seeing a very different side of the MCU here. Which is all connected. Well, actually, it all is bizarrely enough here. Only, only DC can actually get the, get the message, right? So, <laughs> Speaking of DC. Do we have to speak about DC? Oh, we're going to speak about DC. You want to talk about the news I, I, I kicked up, or you want to talk about something else? I uh, no, we can talk about this. I don't really know. I, I didn't. I haven't really heard. Uh, you know more about it than I do, so I'll let you take the lead on this one. Uh, okay, you know, you absolutely know it's my total most favorite subject ever to talk about as well. I know it's not. Okay, okay, I'll keep it short and sweet because I don't, I'm, I'm going to try not to be bitter and angry about it because there's no reason to be. Um, it appears. Mr. Zack Snyder has thrown his support between the uh, to the uh, let Zack Snyder do his sequels for the Justice League uh, movies. Movie, uh, movies is what it tells like four hours long. Good lord, um, which is going to be fantastic and great. So that means we're going to have another three to four years of doxing and death threats and toxic fans. Ain't that going to be a joy? So um, yeah, and we're going to get the end of it. Probably about three to four hours of thunderous twaddle. I'm not enthused. So, <laughs> but we'll see, we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I mean, you know, I mean, we've all sat, we've all, all, all of us, well, this, 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 this podcast and all of us are basically out there, we've all sat through the, the four hour, hours of whatever it was of the, uh, of the Snyder Cut. And we all have various opinions of it. Some think it was fantastic. Some think it, some like me think it was bloody awful. Um, and some people sit in the middle saying it's kind of, it was kind of better than the last one, which is not really a high bar to begin with in the first place. Um, yeah. So yeah, so there's, there's, there's going to be a fan campaign which Snyder is supporting, just like he supported the last one. Just basically, he never condemned the death threats. So we're going to basically we're going to be going through that again for the next three to four years. To basically, one of us go, you know what? We're going to try to basically bring Snyder on board again to basically boost up our, boost up our sale numbers. And um, realize it didn't work like, just like it didn't work last time. Um, but hey, it's going to be a fun ride, eh? Um, maybe we can get more of the uh, Joker asking Batman for a refund. And yeah, on that note, what did you consume this week? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's let's try to let's try to move up, move, move the bar up away from my my ever increasing hole of snark is uh, of snarkism. So I do apologize. I don't try being in depth. By the way, you look very nice tonight. I have oh, said that yet. Yes, yes. And those of you who can't see her or listening on stereo, or we listening on a podcast through one of our many podcast channels, Jean is dressed in a black shoulder, sh sh shoulderless dress with little kitten ears with red hair. So if you ever, if you only see this if you're on our Twitch or YouTube channel, and she's looking very cute tonight. So there we go. Oh, thank you. You are no, quite welcome. Hobbies. 
hubby. Okay. <laughs> yes, Which there's more. That? <laughs> <laughs> That's another podcast. Oh, it is. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, well, we're just across promoting later today. Hubbies, eh? Anyhow, you know, it's, it's been a bit of a bit of a quiet week for me, really, all, all things considered. I mean, you know, I've, I've sat down and watched watched Gundam Ring, Ring, which basically was my gateway into the Gundamverse, which basically is about five Gundams that come to Earth and basically stop the Earth Alliance from basically threatening the space elites. And um, it's a bit angsty and a bit, uh, what can I say? Um, pretty much like a boy band of Gundam pilots. I basically come together and I'll have their little emotional crises together and I basically blowing up various different parts of the Earth Alliance's military, which obviously they just stand still conveniently in stock footage to always get destroyed by them. Um, but I, do enjoy, I did enjoy the show and it was the show that got me into the Gundam universe in, in, in itself. So from watching Gundam Ring, I traveled over to basically watching uh, the, the original Mobile Suit Gundam series. And then I caught the, the, the really cool OVA called 08 Mobile Suit Team, which is basically about Gundams, but fighting in the jungles of uh, Malaysia. And it was very mm -hmm. much a ground level, grunt level series. And it was actually, that was very enjoyable. So Gundaming was my gateway into basically uh, the, the, the Gundamverse. And it was okay. A little angsty. It gets better, in, it gets better in the second half of the, se of the season where basically they go into space and they start having hi huge hyperbole emotional meltdowns. But it was, it, was, it was fun. I really, I really enjoy, I really enjoying it. And I'm going to say this, say this now. And to anybody out there who basically is a fan of Gundam or Gundam Ring, I'm going to say this. Hiro Yui is a crap Gundam pilot. He's probably the worst in the entire Gundam universe. So <laughs> prove me wrong, listeners. Prove me wrong. Uh-oh. Yes, Sounds okay. like the gauntlet has been thrown down. Gold has been thrown down. And remember, I'm a huge Gundam fan, so you're going to have to basically really dig up a really bad pilot to be as bad as Huey Louie. Or Hero Louie, I should call him. He of basically spiker shorts and green green top. So, but also, um, I've also watched Wasted. Do you, do you watch it? Do you catch any of those episodes of Wasted with me? What was it about? It was that basically, it was, like, it was like a stoner comedy. It was up on Hulu. It was Hulu. I really oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was watching that when you were. Yeah, because the TV's so big, you can't help but see it. But yeah, I I watched it as I was working in here. I was watching it in here. As, yeah, mm -hmm. it's 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 actually kind, it's actually kind of, it's kind of fun. They had uh, the, the, one of the main characters basically had Sean Bean as some kind of weird spirit guide. So halfway halfway through the show, Sean Bean would turn turn up dressed like Ned Stark, and they basically had this. Had I love him in the bathroom stall. That was hilarious. That was funny. He just turns up at the oddest of places, and um, it, it, and I think that's probably the best thing I can say about Wasted was basically the Sean Bean appearances. It, it was only like six episodes, six episodes long, so I don't think it, they made any more. Um, but it, I, I really enjoyed the fact that Sean Bean kept popping up at these odd, odd times and places, and him and this main, the main character, I can't remember his name now, who were basically were having these really, really weird, deep philosophical chats. And Sean Bean got got, got to be very Yorkshire because he's from from Yorkshire, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, so <laughs> it, it was just fun. It was just fun. I love, I love that Sean Bean takes the Mickey out of himself. Yeah, it, it's it's kind it's kind it's kind of good at that. And basically, and in in the last episode, they kill Sean Bean. I saw spoilers and everything, but hey, you've been warned at the start of the show. And basically, the main character goes, "You know, you got to die now." And then Sean Bean goes, "Why?" Because Sean, you get killed in everything. And Sean Bean goes, "Yeah, fair enough." <laughs> and they chop his they chop his head off. And it, it gets the gets the cut scene at the end of Wasted, and basically he returns in a big glowing light, like he's basically Gandalf the White. <laughs> and, and, and he points to the camera and goes, "One does not simply kill." Sean B. <laughs> oh, okay. I know the scene you're talking about now. Yes, that yeah, was yes, hilarious. That was funny. I, I think the best parts of Wasted actually was the uh, the Sean Bean stuff. I think else was well, not so much. But um, you know, it was it, it was a fun way to spend th spend about well, well, three hours basically on and off throughout a week. And finally, it was my last my last what did I what did I do this week stuff? Um, I watched it last night. It was basically Midnight Run. Midnight Run. Midnight Run. It's Robert De Niro and um, oh, what's his name? Come back to me in a second. Oh, oh yeah, that's what we were watching last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was um, oh, Charles Godwin. Godwin, that's it. Uh, Charles Godwin and Robert De Niro. Midnight Run. It's actually a a 
interesting action dramedy buddy movie, basically from the late eighties. So sort of thing we probably had, we never really seen anymore because it was kind of ludicrous in its premise. Mm -hmm. But what was happening was happening is uh, Robert De Niro plays a ex cop turned bounty hunter, so no typecasting there. So he basically can wear a leather jacket for the entire thing, and he has to go. He has to basically pick up a Charles Godwin character called the Duke. Who's John Bale? So he, he ends up going to New York to basically uh, find uh, the, the Duke, who's Charles Godwin, and tries to get him a, a back, back across the USA uh, to LA while getting pursued by the FBI, police, and the mob. And all the time, Charles Godwin character is trying to escape as well. And it's actually a, actually a really hilarious movie, really, really good fun. It's about two hours, but you really kind of wish it's a little bit longer. And it kind of pulls all those fun 80s, late 80s buddy. Booty trope type type of stuff, and I highly recommend recommend viewing it if you ever can. I found it on who I found it on HBO Max, so it's called Midnight Run. Oh, another fun fact about Midnight Run: when I spent two years uh, living in Sweden, I was in Gothenburg for six months. It was the only video, I could, the only thing I could find in the apartment I was living in that was basically English language. So I must have watched it probably about a couple hundred times. So, <laughs> oh boy. Yes, oh boy, indeed. But no, it, it, it's a fun movie, so I recommend get watching watching Midnight One, Robert De Niro and Charles Godwin. I think it's one real good role for for Godwin in there. You know, Godwin's from like Lady in the Red, that type of thing. So if you don't eat that, they'll probably get more of an image of who he is. He's a very, very understated actor and comedian. And Robert De Niro actually looks like he's having fun in this movie, not being miserable. So that's really not necessarily mm -hmm. a bad thing. And you know, beyond that, all I did is basically you know, worked, wrote, drew, and um, made some Lego stuff. So, you know. But anyhow, that was that was basically the, the highlights of my week. What was your week like? Um, I I pretty much watched the same stuff you watched this week. Um, <laughs> I discovered a few new witchy shops nearby. Oh, yes. You, 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 you're you going full Wiccan now, aren't you? So. Yeah. And me and our wifey, we found a really nice thrift shop, yeah. and we could have spent a okay. couple hours in there, but we had to, we had to go, we had to bring somebody lunch. We were late. <laughs> we brought I did, I did appreciate the lunch. It's just like you, you literally ran, ran me up against half a dozen meetings, so it's like, oh well, that goes my lunch. Anyway, that's not the most important thing that happened to you this week, is it? Oh no! Um, on Saturday, I got my first dose of the Moderna vaccine. Yeah, that's right. You I basically got your arm. Wow, you can't see a thing. You see, you, the light is completely <laughs> making your arm completely white. But you did get the get the get the German left arm. How is how has it been affecting you? Um, right after it happened, I felt kind of lightheaded and kind of fuzzy headed. And when we got home, I just spent the well, you know, I spent the rest of the day in bed. Yeah, hence I got a little mood. <laughs> yesterday and today, my head feels kind of like it's vibrating, mm. and my um, my face feels hot and flushed, and I feel kind of sluggish and tired. Mm. Other and you know, my arms sore, but I mean, other than that, it's not. Too bad. It's not like, oh my god, I'm dying. <laughs> yeah, no. It's just you, you feel like it's you not feel fun, like, but it's not, you know. Yeah, I, I can't even compare because I've got the I got the I got the one and done Johnson and Johnson. So uh, and that kind of make you saw me you saw me the day after. I looked like I got hit by a truck. So you 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 you're pretty much going through the same things I'm going through. I went through. Now the good news is by day three I was absolutely fine and clear. I mean you have some underlying conditions, so it's going to be a little bit longer, I think, but. Um, the arm, the the arm thing, that's going to hurt for a little bit longer. I'm sorry, I am literally a week after my after my Johnson Johnson and my. Yeah, and yours is still sore. <laughs> but, but you know what? It's better work. than getting the virus. So it is better getting the virus. We've been very lucky so far. And and the get the vaccine. Effects, yes, get the vaccine, everybody. The vaccine, the, the, uh, the side effects are really not that bad. They're just. It's like having a mild. It's like you basically got run over for a day or so, and that's. It's not really anything to really worry about. If anything, it's an excuse to veg on the uh, sofa if you can, and that type mm -hmm. of thing. But uh, you know, uh, I'm glad you're feeling a little bit better. But I know you still know. You still know. You you're still not where you, where you were, and I'm hoping. But hopefully, in the next couple of days, you start feeling a lot clean, clean and clear in your head, 
It's a it really yeah, is. Yeah, my head feels that's most of it. Most of the side effects has been like in my head, like very like fuzzy headed and like my head just kind of vibrating and humming and kind of feeling like the world's kind of like sped up and then slowed down. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, I actually was, talk, I was actually talking to uh, somebody in a meeting today about basically the COVID jab, and I said it kind of feels like you got buzzed on beer, like a beer buzz. And you are at that point between the buzz and starting to feel the feel drunk, and you kind of stuck in that area. That's how mm -hmm. I feel. So yeah, I mean, I don't recommend everybody to get a buzz by the way. Just get the get the vaccine to basically protect yourself. But um, you know, that's, that's the I think that's the area I kind of sat in for about two about two days. I think that I kind of went away halfway through the third day, but yeah, it was like I was had like you know weird buzzy feelings in my head, death perception issues. Lightheadedness, oh, yeah. all that kind of fun, all, all that kind of fun stuff. It was, it was just really, really strange. And you've got one more to go, and you've got, and, and the second one, unfortunately, sounds a bit more, of a, a bit more. It's going to be more of a whammy than the than the first one. So I hope it doesn't affect you that bad. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. But you know what? As you said, it's worth it. Hey, everybody, get your vaccine. Okay. Yes, it's all be superheroes vaccine. now. Get the be, vaccine. Get the vaccine. Be superheroes. Let's get this world back to normal. A time in the sun is now coming. It's so close now, and these vaccines are part of that trip for us to get there. So go get it. Plus, if we more biggest vaccines, we can finally get out to comic book conventions, and that's actually a good thing in itself. So we can always start dressing up, and I can start selling my books again online. Yay! Oh, yes. Oh, I want to yes, go to the convention. I want to dress up, damn it. <laughs> yeah, so, but no, no, please, everybody. Speaking of superheroes. Oh, okay. We're speaking of superheroes. Okay, good segue. Where are we going? Um, Falcon and the Winter Soldiers. Falcon and the Winter Soldier, indeed. Yeah, so we're episode five now, which means we've only got one more to go. Yep. Next and week. The, the, well, this week, the last episode, so they got a, a lot of stuff to... A lot of stuff to pack away, right? Yeah, so it's going to be interesting to see how they pack it all up. <laughs> Yes, it is. Yes, but I think we'll. I think we should s save some of our predictions to the end, uh, end of our segment here about Falcon and Winter Soldier. I mean, over, I, I, what do you? What do you? Well, what let's you talk about the the, the the fight at the beginning. Which was okay. Okay, I'm glad. I'm glad we started that because you know, um, we had what Walker. Walker was like running away from basically where he killed that guy, which I found strange for him to do because he, he didn't seem that kind of bothered about killing that guy. Um, mm. But he was running away, and then he, get, he gets to that warehouse. <laughs> a lot of Marvel fights seem to take part in this in, in this series in warehouses. Um, and he, what I, what I found poignant is when basically Sam and Bucky found Walker. He was in that fallen sun pose, where basically he's like leaning leaning behind the shield, leaning on the shield, like he's praying. Yeah, um, just like out of the out of time storyline. Out, out of the out of time story, basically, what I call the fallen the fallen sun covers. And um, yeah, it was it was just prominent to see that because that's a very if you actually go online and basically type in Captain America in Captain America illustrations, you'll find the fallen sun image is a very prominent image in mm -hmm. in, in, that, in that area. And I actually found it kind of a haunting throwback. I, I know we know Walker's not who Steve is, but it was just a, 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 an interesting. Uh, you call him Easter eggs, right? So I you yeah. know. Well, I, 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 Okay, I just called him base. I, I, it was just to me. It's just basically a very prominent image. So basically, it was a a visual image that Walker had fallen. So, um, oh, there were a yeah. lot of callbacks to Civil War and um, the, the music, the the choreography, the choreography of the fights. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. You know the rage over a dead loved one. Like there were so many callbacks, it was just oh, it's yeah, it was. It was a good. It was a very good fight scene. I mean, we, we got to see it on, on, on a couple of levels. Um, first, we got to basically see you know, you, you know little talk to, and you can see Bucky's barely barely contained rage. Where basically he 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 says, "Yeah, I want to." He's been waiting for this moment to basically unleash on Walker. Oh yeah, because he never he never wanted uh, Walker to have it in the first place. So yeah, he was dying to take this back. Yeah. So, and but uh, it's actually it, it was a very good 
fight scene. I think it actually had an emotional feel to it as well because we, oh yeah, you know, it was gut wrenching to watch too. Because, just I mean, just the pain and and just all of it. It, it was just so emotional. And you know what? I'm, I'm gonna give props to Wyatt Russell again. He's playing the heck out of out, 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 out of out of Walker here. And he's giving oh, Walker he's doing a kick-ass, phenomenal fucking job. He really is, and and I, I'm going to say this say, say, say this now. He's supposed to make you hate the character, but he also he's given that character a degree of sympathy as well, which is fantastic mm -hmm. in, the, in in a way he's nuances that he's he's playing this character. And remember this, guys. He's just an actor playing a role. Stop those bloody death threats, okay? Just the character. <laughs> It's, it's the cat. Hate the character, not the actor. Okay. Um, but yeah, so basically, it was a very poignant, poignant, and, and, and emotional fight scene. You know, Bucky was basically, you know, desperate to take the shield. Walker was desperate to hold on to the shield. I mm -hmm. think Sam was actually desperately trying to stop them from trying to kill each other. It's mm -hmm. true. Uh, so, but um, we saw, uh, we saw basically Walker's rage and anger and frustrations build up during the, during the entire fight. We had the callbacks to basically uh, walk Bucky as Winter Soldier fighting Cat, fighting Steve from Winter Soldier with the, with the mm -hmm. fight scenes going on, yep. um, and be, trying to be cold and methodical, but getting more and more angry. We saw Sam trying to tr 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 using his gear to try to fight at the same level as basically Bucky and Walker. What was I found interesting was, was though was Sam was getting his ass kicked. Every time he tried to get involved in the fight, he was between these two these two enhanced uh, soldiers. Mm -hmm. uh, he was getting his ass kicked. He he was not really like you know making a huge effect on the fight and to really really at the end we basically uh helps Bucky get the shield off Walker by using using his jetpacks. Mm -hmm. It was a heck of a fight. And when basically um Walker got Sam on the ground and had the shield above his head. And I thought, oh, my God, here we go again. Oh, my God, yes. I was like, no, please. No, don't do this. No. Walker, Walker literally, literally spitting with rage. Because we've got to remember one very important thing. The serum enhances what's inside you. And Walker has a lot of contained rage. So, um, so literally spitting with rage. And he was going to kill Sam the same way he killed the Flag Smasher. Mm -hmm. That was going to happen. And until basically Bucky got, got, got back in, got back into the fight again. It was. Wow. And when he Bucky picks him up, picks him Walker up and just swings him and mm -hmm. like slam like a. Oh my! I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, that, that was a good callback to basically what happened to um, Hoskins as well. So you know. Mm -hmm. Because uh, yeah, and it was it was a good a, a very good fight scene. I mean, we're not just saying the best because the sheer basically it, you know choreography. They put a lot of emotion into this fight, and you can see the characters trying to the actors trying to get their characters to show the nuances of what's going through their heads and how they're feeling that type of thing. And again, why was so really kicked really knocked it out of the park? I really liked what uh, Sebastian Stan is doing with doing the, with, with the bookie character. You can feel he he. Bucky's having this contained rage inside, anger inside him that he mm -hmm. really wants to cut loose and he's restraining himself all the time because he's afraid if he cuts loose he'll turn back into the Winter Soldier. Yep. And then you've got Sam basically trying, trying to be trying to basically talk people down. He's almost, in many ways, basically being the Steve Rogers of the fight. Um, but Sam is always on man, so I don't like to label him that way. Well, he was a veteran counsellor mm -hmm when yeah. steve met him so oh yeah you know, so, he, he gets it but they, they finally they finally get the shield off walker they finally defeat they finally defeat walker literally breaking his arm to get that shield off him that snap was horrifying. mirrored kind of mirrors how they got the try to get the gauntlet off of uh thanos thanos the dog pile agree. Yeah, but it was it was a hell of a pile, and it, it actually does show that basically you know, you, you know the, how how he's enhanced soldiers. That's what they are, and they're, mm -hmm. they're so basically it makes them it makes them so much so much stronger. But what I found what I found was interesting as well, and basically you know Sam's laying on the ground, and Walker's laying on the ground, and Bucky stand, stands up and picks the shield up, and he's like holding it for a couple of seconds. I'm starting to think, is he going to walk off with that shield? Did you think that, Tom? No, because he doesn't. 
he doesn't feel worthy enough. I know, but he's also to, angry at Sam. And he knows that they were, I don't think so. He he wanted Sam to have it. Okay, so he, I, he, I, I, he's yeah. he's pissed off because if Sam wouldn't have gave it away and would have kept it like he told him to in the first place, they wouldn't be in this whole fucking situation. So he's aggravated with them, you know. Yeah, like, we, we, I think, I think, because you didn't keep it. Yeah, I did, I did get that when he dropped the shield shield next to Sam and just walked away. That was him saying, like, we would have gone through this bullshit if you just kept the shield. Yeah, so. and you could see in Sam's face the regret and, like, the pain in his face, like, fuck, you know, I, this is my fault. I should have kept the fucking shield. Well, yeah, but he also we also know why he didn't keep keep the shield in the first place because he didn't mm -hmm. feel like he was he was worthy of the legacy of carrying Steve's legacy. He thought the legacy should have stopped with Steve. Mm -hmm. So, but um, yeah, it was it was an, it was a great fight in terms of basically action, and it was a great fight in terms of basically nuances and acting from all the actors in the in the in the scene. They played their characters really well, all of them to the, to the absolute hill. All of them were believable. You, you believe their motivations. You, you felt for Bucky. You felt for Sam. You even felt a little bit sorry for Walker because he's basically at this point, pushed to this point, and he's, at so, he's so much out, out of control, and he doesn't want to give up the mantle because he still feels he's worthy to be Cap. But... Um, he doesn't want to give it up, even though he knows he's done wrong. So... I and mean, you can just feel all it's just a, it was an emotional fight as, as much as it was a physical fight. No, I, I agree. And then they they take Walker away and yep, yep. Bucky goes off and Sam gives his wings to Torres, if that's not some foreshadowing. Um I don't know if there's any foreshadowing or not. I guess, I guess we'll find you out. You don't think he's going to take those wings? Mm. Well, I think the Goomba's going to take those wings, yeah. But, uh, nah, so. I, I think, I think Tor is going to take those wings, and he's going to fix them up, and he's going to be the next Falcon, and he, he's going to be the Falcon next to um, Sam being Cap. I, I, I don't remember any precedent of any other characters being the Falcon, but I could be wrong, so... Oh yeah, in the comic books, Taurus becomes the Falcon Must be because good. Sam's bird, the his actual bird Falcon, a, a scientist. Um, I think that works for the power broker. Splice some genes and yeah, made Taurus into an actual part person, part Falcon. Oh, okay. Yeah. You you know what you just done there. You just you have just basically you know. Out knowledge to comic book geek. <laughs> Congratulations. Seriously, I mean, I really am. Congratulations. You've been out I, 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 can, I cannot remember if what was it, how happens to, to, to Draqueen Taurus. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, yeah, you are absolutely correct. He does become Falcon, but with Falcon with wings. But whether they'll do that that way, we'll find out, won't we? So it should be fun. And then Walker goes to trial and they of uh, like we knew just like the good old government. Take you know, thank you for your service. Fuck you, you're not getting shit. Yeah, they publicly and he publicly humiliated him and removed him from service Stripped and took him of everything and now of everything. he's like abandoned and betrayed by his country. in his in his eyes doing what they trained him and made him to do. It was a very prominent line when he said, what I, they told him to do. I, he, he, line, he says, I did abs everything, everything you told me to do. Mm -hmm. And um, and I mean, I, I'm, but there's going to be some darkness behind some of the stuff that Walker has done. He was, he was special ops after all. Um, they keep, and they reference like Afghanistan thing back in the, in, in the uh, episode, th episode four. Mm -hmm. So I, I think he's done some pretty uh, murky stuff for the government in the past. Uh, but yeah, they publicly humiliated him. suffering from PTSD and, yeah. and, and other issues that, that that veterans like that suffer from when they come back for more. Yeah, but I, it's whether they publicly humiliated him, publicly stripped him of the role, stripped him of everything that had meaning in his mm -hmm. life. 
mm -hmm. I was giving him a complete injustice about everything. I mean, he, the guy was a the guy was one hundred percent percent one for a better word, all American in terms of mm -hmm. basically his, his beliefs. He, he he would literally the guy who go to go 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 on that hill and stand and die for his country. He was one of those type type of type, type of soldiers. I mean, yeah, he had some lots of morally grey about him, and he definitely has a contained rage. Um, but the cat, the action, you know, in this Walker in the MCU is a little different to the Walker in the Marvel comics. Uh, so so we're going to see, you, you know, his. his treatment of the, his belief system is basically you, you know is the is the american military we're going to see some different changes about his character i think this time it, it was it was heartbreaking and it, i mean we knew it was going to happen and, but it, it was heartbreaking to see and it, yeah. it was sad and I mean, you know and, and uh, you know and the government officials are just like mm, no, no, fuck you no oh, well too bad yeah, and basically he screams on the microphone that i am captain america um yeah well that comes to basically some of the injustice he's feeling basically application of the serum inside him but in many ways he is kind of right he is the captain america of what the america is now not what america could be so um yeah, yeah that's, that's, but that's probably he gets right. a little visit after his trial oh gods yeah now this this was really like you know, okay so with, with all the characters we're going to choose we're going to choose a pretty obscure character that only you know marvel nerds like me really remember and know about or oh, if anybody has seen the old uh, david hasselhoff nick fury movie that's made back in the late, late, late 90s um the contessa played by oh, julia louise dreyfus i know that was a surprise i used her for that but you know what it kind of fits the character oh but, yeah. yeah the contessa oh dear me was not uh, expecting that. No, I was not expecting of all the characters, I was not expecting Valentina Alegirio de Fontaine. I was not expecting her at all. There you go. I bet you didn't think I was going to remember her name, huh? So, <laughs> <laughs> well, she of basically, uh, it, she was basically oh, from the the Satino, um, uh, Fury, Agent of Shield comic books. So basically, Fury is more of like a cap, more of a 007 type character, and her and Fury had a bit of a uh, romantic relationship. So, <laughs> um, but she was a bit, yeah, yeah, she's got a lot, a lot of history in the comic books, which, as we do know, we know virtually means nothing in the MCU because they'll just basically just take what they want. Um, but uh, she's an interesting character in the Marvel, Marvel books. Uh, she's got various shades of grey too, but she was an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. at one point. She did have a relationship with uh, Nick Fury. And yeah, she so... She was Madam Hydra for a short time. She was Madam Hydra. She was part of Hydra for some time as well. And she, she was she of basically, just like Black Widow, of tight clothing. She seemed to be talking about basically uh, Marvel's reflection of basically putting their superheroines in very tight spandex. Mm. And she did have a female team in the comics, that sh and Sharon was in that team. Yes, she was. Yes, yes. We'll probably we'll link back to some stuff we're going to discuss later with uh, Sharon. But um, yeah, I think um, the question is: um, I mean, she knows all these secrets about the Shield and other things, and you know, is she working for Ross and the Thunderbolts? Could be. I mean, is she the power broker or working for the power broker? Oh, the power broker. Power broker's turned into the Memphisto or the Falcon and Winter Soldier. Um, I don't know. We don't know. We, we didn't get enough of the character to basically really learn about what a character's role is in the MCU. Is. She certainly basically does know, know a lot of information. Um, she has a black mysterious cord. She's got a, she, she, she was really was a real fast talker, basically saying, hey, I know everything that you already know. That type, that type of thing. So um, we'll see. We'll see what uh, her role is going to be, and what and what she, her connection will be to Walker, and, and she will we'll call him. Maybe she'll basically call him to basically form the U.S. Avengers or something like that. You know. I don't know. I guess we're going to find out. We are going to find out. Yes, yes. So you know, it was interesting to see. She's definitely very cagey. Very cagey, <laughs> cagey. and again. Again, it's like okay, so we've we've pulled we've pulled in front of you a really obscure character from the Marvel universe, but you know what? She actually was a pretty prime mover back in the back in the book, so we should see some interesting stuff going on here. 
So, but yeah, yeah. And I do. speaking of thunderbolts. Oh, okay, okay. Speaking of thunderbolts, yes, we're gonna talk about go back to the scene. We're gonna go to the scene where basically Zemo is standing in front of the uh, Savokian uh, monument. Yep. Yeah, and, and basically Bucky turns up, and they they have a little talk, and basically Zemo tells Bucky that it's only going one way to, one way to basically stop Carla, and that's to kill her. Mm -hmm. And um, he basically uh, he, he's looking at Bucky's just looking at him, and then basically uh, you see on um, Zemo, and again props to Daniel Burr on this one here. All the actors are really, really, really knocking it out of the park here. The emotion on his face that says, "Oh shit, you're here to kill me. You're not here to take me prisoner. You're here to kill me." Mm -hmm. and, um, in Bucky, and you're not, and again, you know, Sebastian still as well. He's like, you're not sure if he's going to or not. <laughs> Yeah, you you weren't sure for a you second. Were sure, you weren't sure if he was going to literally do that. And um, he he puts the gun. He he, he, he pings, pings the gun, points it points it at Zemo's head, and Zemo's just standing there going, "Okay, just get it over." Because we've got to remember, Zemo can still wants to has still has a death wish. Yeah, he, he wants to be with his family. Wants to be with his family, uh, and he's calmly accepting the fact that basically, you know, Bucky's going to kill him now. Almost like he was like planned this to be a thing to happen anyway, which you yeah. Know, and um, Bucky just like pulls the trigger and we'll go fuck and just goes click, and uh, you, you can always visibly see Zemo piss his pants almost. I mean, obviously he doesn't because he's like he's, he's basically a special ops veteran as well. But you can see that see that holy fuck he would he he wanted to kill he, he would have wanted to kill me. Mm -hmm. And they have that little, little talk afterwards where basically he tells Bucky, look, I took the liberty to liberty of basically crossing my name out in your book. And he talks about basically, you know, he stop, stop trying to find redemption and that sort of thing. So, mm -hmm. which I thought was kind of poignant as well. I mean, um, and then we have the uh, the door majeur turn up to take him in custody. So, and yep, and they're taking him to the raft where, um, which is run by none other than. Thaddeus Ross. Thaddeus Ross. Oh. So, you know, you got Zemo in there. <laughs> I know. We, got, we have Zemo in there. We're going to have probably some other guys that oh, 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 other get, 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 they're going to be in there. there eventually. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, but yeah, so we're going to see what's going to happen. Yeah, John may, be, may or may not be in there eventually, we don't know. But the Thunderbolts, if you don't, if you know, if you don't know what they are and you're new to the Marvel Universe, the Thunderbolts are basically a team of uh, supervillains that are formed to basically take on, basically, so we say, morally obscure, morally dark missions that basically normal heroes would not do. Uh, and they're not really expected to survive. So kind of like uh, Marvel's version of the Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad. <laughs> Yeah, but they're, 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 they're dark. There's, a, there's some humor in the books as well, and the teams the teams are very interesting. But I'm just hoping if we get the Thunderbolts, which obviously they're carting back, carting Zemo off to the to the raft, which feels like it's a segue to to the Thunderbolts, at least a team like that. That we get characters like Mac One, who's basically like an Iron Man type character. We're going to get Moonstone, which is basically a uh, Captain Marvel type character. So we're going to see some interesting, interesting characters coming in. This course would be a segue and lead up to maybe a Dark Avengers type series or a Dark Avengers movie. So that's what uh, I wouldn't mind seeing that. Well, I think that'd be interesting. So they basically go towards the, uh, you know, you know the, 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 the Dark Avengers types type stuff, which is entirely possible because they're basically, you know. Uh, we we seen characters that basically have appeared have appeared in Dark Avengers and have appeared in Thunderbolts start to appear in these appear in these series now, and uh, obviously Walker, uh, those who don't know, actually actually is a member of the Thunderbolts at one point. So, mm -hmm. and also he's also a, a member of the U.S. Avengers at some point as well. So we got we got two possibilities of two super te super teams basically coming together here. So, but you know. Thunderbolts, I'm excited about, about that because we're going to see characters like Songbird, which is a, a, a great a great character as well. I'm, my particular fa favorite of mine is Moonstone, uh, who is basically uh, swallows these powerful Moonstones that gives us these these like reality chain these reality zapping power things. And um, the Mac One, which is basically just back to how to say basically an armored suit like Iron Man, but not as powerful as Iron Man suit. Mm -hmm. 
So we're going to see some great, some, some great, great and interesting characters here. So I'm being a bit distracted because uh, one of the cats is up here, and I'm hoping they don't mm -hmm. disconnect, disconnect me. So <laughs> oh god, doesn't um, happen. And while he's visiting, Bucky's visiting Zemo. Sam pays a visit to Isaiah. To talk yes, to him. yes, yes. But we're missing one important thing from the the, the scene with um, Zemo. Uh, we're basically, you know, the. Uh, Ao tells uh, Bucky to basically don't you shouldn't you shouldn't be in, you shouldn't come to Wakanda for a while. Yeah, and he says he, he he understands that, but he has got one last favor to ask, and then he basically cuts out from that scene. So, and then we basically we we we, we revisit Sam uh, in Baltimore. I mean, clean look. You know, it looks like a very uh, county part of Baltimore, not Baltimore itself. <laughs> so. Uh, but uh, you yeah, know, we're interested to see, we're interested to know where they filmed that. Where basically he films Isaiah. So he basically films. He meets. He goes to meet Isaiah. He goes to talk to Isaiah to get, you know, find out what the the real story is. To get the real story finally from Isaiah. To get Isaiah to tell him, hopefully, what happened. And you know, and it's heartbreaking. I cried. Like it's, it's a very hard, hard. it's a very hard working and hard story. I mean, um, um, red, white, and black, which is basically Isaiah Bradley's uh, story, is actually got, it's actually well was putting it back into print again. So if nobody's actually got it yet, you should pick it up and read it. It really is a very good book. Um, but and yeah, they, it's they kind, of, they, they kind of based it on you know things that really did happen. Like they gave African Americans in this. In the U.S., they gave them, told them they were giving them a tetanus shot, and they were giving them a placebo and just let them die. Yeah, uh, and that's basically based on the on, on the syphilis trials in Tuscany, where basically they were deliberately infecting African Americans with with syphilis. They yeah. can't see what happens. Yeah, it's a very horrific part of, part of the USA's history, and, and the guys really should learn, read up about it and learn a bit more about that. But the actual comic book itself, Red, White, and Black, is, is coming is coming back into print. So I, if you if you really want to read the story about Isaiah Bradley, you can pick it up now, which is going good. And I highly recommend getting this book. But yeah, so we basically heard, learned the story of basically Isaiah, how basically he was treated, um, how there was other you know, he, he went to save the other. You know, they were going to blow up a POW camp that had some of his fellow. Um, it was comrades. Fellow comrades in it, and he broke out of the facility and and against you know, their orders and went and got them. And that's what they used to like jail him and told his wife that he was dead. And like, you know, a, a nurse had pity on him and like declared him dead and got, you know, and got him out. And he's been like hiding, you know, pretty much since. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a, it's a horrible story. It, it is a horrific story, but uh, a story that's probably made more horrific by how, True, it feels as well. Um, it's it's a it's a Isaiah Bradley has a very tragic, tragic story. Um, character ultimately was heroic, uh, but treated just ultimately so badly that it's just it's just. Well, and it shows how privilege and racial inequality created the the those two different experiences that Steve mm -hmm. and Isaiah had. Yeah, and but even I, I like Brooklyn says later to Sam, like him and Steve never really thought about the implications of or what it meant handing the shield to Sam. Mm -hmm. Because well, how could they? They don't. They, they, well, Brooklyn and Steve don't operate at that level because um, they, 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 Steve. Is generally a good Steve is generally a good man, and the serum enhances what's inside. So Steve was already good before going in. Oh, Tuskegee. Oh, thank you very much. We've got somebody say Tuskegee. Um, but Steve was generally a good man. Um, so in, the serum enhances what's inside you. So it's important to remember the serum enhances what's inside you and enhances what you mm -hmm. are. Steve was a good man that basically enhanced it into an even better man. I thoroughly believe even before that, that Steve and Bucky. Were not in in, in that in that common American thing of basically you know basically being casual racist. I don't believe they ever were, um, and 
you can tell by the way the way, way Steve's acted way booking acts that's not that, that was never, never a thing but again they lived in it lived in a position of privilege being white that basically they never thought about what could actually happen as well um so um but I thoroughly believe if Steve knew about Bradley he would have broke him out or he would have exposed the truth Mm -hmm. So I do honestly do believe that basically knowing Steve Rogers as a character, he would do that. So. Well, and Isaiah thinks, that, well, Sam thinks the cycle can be broken. And yeah. Isaiah feels like, you know, no respecting black men would ever take the shield because of, you know, why would you take, why would you represent a country that doesn't feel that way about you? Yeah, but that's the thing. Captain America doesn't represent the country. He represents what the country could be. Mm. He, 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 he doesn't represent what America is now. He represents what America could be. And I think that's a very important distinction. The well, Steve and that always, goes back to, like, the difference with him and Sam and John. John mm. thinks power is a right. Yep. Sam struggles to, you know, if he's even worthy yep. of it. And that's the difference. That's actually a very good anthology. Well done. I, I think that's a very good one. I, I'm, and that's a very good anthology about basically an anthology about basically, you know, how, how each one sees power. And, you know, it was a horrible, horrible thing to listen to and watch. And I know you cried. I, I know I felt the sorry that you did. I mean, I knew what was coming in this in, in his story there, but it was still horrible, horrible to watch. And, and the actor just really, I can't remember his name. I wrote it down. And I mean, I know, I know there's a lot of people that feel like, you know, why is it going to be so political? It's not political. So, um, uh, hello. <laughs> Captain America's always been political. His very first comic was him punching Hitler. So you know. So it's really, yeah. Remember, everybody, Captain America was basically invented by by two Jewish artists who basically wanted to basically contribute to the war effort. So um, yeah, it's been I'm a glad that they're talking about real world topics and things that are going on right now. I think it's and, important. And, and the credible mistake be. there because I, it's a mistake. It, it, it's an injustice not to say it. The actor who played Isaiah Bradley was Carl Lumby. Carl Lumby. Yeah. So I want to make sure that's actually said and important. It's just very important to recognize his acting his acting to basically being that being I said the tragic the tragic character that Isaiah Bradley is is to life and making us feel that pain. Oh so, Carl Lumley's amazing. So just amazing. I was, I was very, very very And very, I, I I would love if we get more of him. You know, I, maybe I we will. If, if, if we get more of Eli, we may get more more, more of uh, Isaiah. So fingers crossed. I hope so too, because Eli is a very good character as well. Because he's kind of a little bit like Sam. Uh, he wants to change. He wants to change things, but he's still basically haunted by the experiences of his um, of his granddad. So. And to lighten the mood, now we have to talk about the the wonderful. You know, buddy montage. Bucky <laughs> and Sam back at home. Yeah, yeah, but let's just say, but, 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 but Sam's back, 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 back working on his sister's boat, and uh, they, they, they have a child. Basically, they, they, they are going to try to save the legacy. So we're back, we're back on that legacy, that, that, that legacy track. This, 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 this legacy, about legacy, embracing history. Yeah, embracing history, and then Bucky just turns up carrying this, casually carrying this case. Uh, he says, "You know, I, I'm just here, here here to ensure that you sign for this." And, After uh, he picks up the big, huge motor and picks, moves picks, it. picks up that huge, huge boat engine. So yeah. And what do you want is just pick it up, just put it over here. That's hilarious. Um, and also, they, 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 and it gives him that gives him that case and case which we know is from Wakanda. And the boat, the boat springs a leak from basically a hydraulic line, and Bucky got it, and Sam can't fix it. Bucky goes to help him. He just had that line about, you know, why didn't you use your your your, your, your robotic arm? And he goes, well, I'm, I'm naturally right-handed, and sometimes I don't think about that, <laughs> which I thought was yeah, funny too. which which you know just shows that you know he's more human than robot. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, so he's he, uh, so the problem. But it was, it was. We we did have a more like we went from all this darkness and tragedy and basically you know to this like, I think it was needed. 
we needed to, we needed to see these two characters bond more than they have been. They have been a little bit at odds for the past past three or four episodes. So we got to see basically, you know, the working on the boat together type thing, and we got to got to see him play frisbee with Steve Shield, which was, <laughs> was beautiful. Talk, we're talking through some of their their their, their problems and how they're feeling. You know, and Sandy I love before. seeing Bucky and and the little flirtation with Bucky and Sarah was cute. <laughs> and Sam, you know, don't touch my sister. Yeah, don't, 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 don't be flipping my sister now. And the kids um, playing with the shield when Bucky was sleeping was cute. Yeah, so. We, we, and we, if we, you'll we, notice, he slept on the couch. Mm-hmm. He didn't sleep floor. on the floor. Yeah, actually, yeah, you know, good point. He didn't sleep on the floor, so Which maybe he just thought- he's you know, he's getting better. He's not sleeping he's on the floor. He's adjusting, a little bit less PTSD, but he's, he's adjusting mm-hmm. and allowing himself some comfort, I guess. Uh, but I thought I thought the talk between Sam and Bucky where they're throwing, throwing, it's like throwing the frisbee, <laughs> throwing, 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 throwing the shield back and, uh, from those trees at each other. And basically Sam acted a bit more of a counselor for Bucky saying, hey, you, you know, you, you may come to, come to, a, come to a, a strange thing for me to say, but it doesn't matter what Steve says. Yeah. So, you know, and I'm just he tells that Bucky, you know, he if he wants to, you know, um, make amends, then he has to go to these people and be of service to of, to them, which yeah. you know is setting setting us up for him to go tell Mr. Nakajima what happened to his son. That's going to be a horrible thing to say. No, that's coming. We know it. We knew it was coming from. It was, it was foreshadowed all the way from basically episode one, but. Um, yeah, it was actually just where Sam goes, goes, and Bucky's like, I can't do that, can't do it. And Sam says, just start with one. One. Do one. And yeah. I guess we're going to see some, we're going to see, we're going to see a, a, a story closure loop there. But I, th- I think it's basically, it's just the thing, you know, basically kind of like, they're kind of like uh, counseling each other. So, so, sort yeah. of thing. You know, Sam, Bucky was convincing Sam that, hey, he, Steve chose you because, of who you are. Yeah, you, you are like, worthy of the shield. You are worthy of the shield. It's convincing Sam that he's worthy of the shield while Bucky was basically convincing well Sam was convincing Bucky that actually, hey, you are a human being. You're not a killer. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's actually a very a, a very important a very important thing. So then to basically get get to the, get get to that get to that point where they're talking and basically get that more bonding moment going on. So uh, and I love when they part. They're just kind of like you know, we're just we're partners, two guys. Right? We're colleagues. Two guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Steve's gone, I, I, Steve's gone. So now we're just two guys. I'm okay two, with that. Two guys. Two guys. Cool with that, kind of thing. And so he goes, you know, give me a call when basically you find out where we, what we do next. So we know it, they're basically setting, setting up their episode six stuff, obviously, but also setting up basically, you know. They're actually okay. They were belligerent partners at the very beginning. Now they're actually partners. Mm-hmm. So I think that's going to be very significant going forward. And at the end, we get Sharon calling Batrock again. Oh and... gosh. Yeah, yeah. That was that was like you know why is she... well you were a bit confused to begin with. I said and I said that's Batrock. Algeria prison, French, that's Batroc. And you're going, what the hell is Sharon calling Batroc for? Yeah, why, why? Why and why is she why is she working with the flag snatchers to disrupt the GRC voting? And why does she why is she helping them? And why does she care to disrupt the GRC voting? It's not that they're gonna yeah. go basically uh, go basically go charging into Mandipur. So But yeah, yeah, so that, that, that that's that's a question about Sharon. Who is she working for? Mm-hmm. Could she be the power broker? Is the power broker Zola in a suit? You know, who knows? Maybe Zola, we'll find that episode Zola, six. Zola, Zola. Oh, come on. It's, it's Memphisto all over again. The flies Memphisto. The birds Memphisto. The hex hey. Memphisto. Uh, we don't know. But, you know, this is, de- this is definitely a, a, de- a demonstration that the shower that we're seeing now is not the shower we saw in Civil War. Yeah, there's so, definitely there, there's definitely more going on there. And I think she might be related to Contessa. You said basically Contessa, Contessa had a a, 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 a a small group of female agents that work for her. Mm-hmm. I think I think Contessa 
they're certain sharing related to the game and to basically what they're trying to do. They may be trying to form a super group, they may be trying to find form a, a covert operation group like Secret Warriors or mm -hmm. something like that. So um we, I Maybe think it's gonna Fury's be just this, trying to make a, a a Thunderbolt kind of thing. Who knows? Well Fury's Fury's team is called the Secret Warriors, which is a little bit different. Yeah, but, maybe, uh, who knows? Who knows what's going on there? Oh, uh, again, so we don't know what's going on, but I think Contessa and Sharon are in the same track. Uh, I think so too. I'm not quite sure what else there will be. What else is going on there? I I know there's theories that Sharon is the power broker. I don't think she is. Uh, honestly, I don't think she is. But is she working for the power broker, or is she working to subvert the power broker? But again, I think those are possibilities. I think those are more strong Batroc? possibilities. I mean, is Batroc, is she using Batroc like an asset? So that's something that basically to get to basically use as something to basically fulfill a, a means to an end, or is she mm -hmm. calling Batroc in because she really wants Batroc to really hurt Sap? We don't know. Mm -hmm. I think I'm, I'm, I'm moving a little bit towards the means to an end thing that she's got her own, her own agenda with the Contessa. Um, so we'll see, what, we'll see what's going on there. This is going to be an interesting thing to wrap up in uh, wrap up episode, episode six, if they can, or even hint at it a bit more. But basically, what exactly what game is Sharon playing here? Yep. And then we get Walker visits Lamar's family. Yes, we did. Yes, um, that was Why a big. What happens <coughs> to um, further his belief that he was right in what he did? Yeah, I think so too. Um, they they basically thanked him for basically justice. Yeah. Uh, in many ways, <laughs> you could see it as a kind of justice, I guess, but it was still wrong to do. Um, uh, but yeah, we, so we see we, we're seeing this the, 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 a, a different angle here again. I basically, I'm always doing. I've do, been very good at doing this. That basically, there's no evil or bad for bad sake. There's all reasons behind things. And mm -hmm. reasons as people like us can kind of kind of agree with to a, to a certain degree, um, and I think we're seeing this with with, with Walker. They've, they've justified Walker's actions for him, you know. And oh so, yeah, definitely. Um, you feel and, justified and 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 now and feels like he did the right thing. He did the right thing, and I think that's that, that's an interesting in, in itself, which probably changed his mindset because he, he was kind of wandering a bit because he, he had it's just had everything taken from him. He didn't know what to do, so mm -hmm. we're going to see. Well, we'll talk about it later. But is, is the Contessa going to when Contessa calls him? Is he going to take Contessa up on her up on her offer? And we're going to see where that offer ends because I think he's going to, and, and we're going to see so we're going to see what Walker turns into and USA, and it, we know. In the Marvel books, he comes. He becomes, you know, the U.S. agent. But will he just become agent or something like that first? When mm -hmm. he becomes U.S. agent, we don't know yet. Um, but yeah, so oh, that and was, we that can't forget about the little, the little workout montage that we get with Sam and and and, and the shield, which was really cute. Yeah, it was kind of cute, and that's what I was half expecting to hear Rocky music. You know, and I love when he tells his nephew, you know, I can do this all day. That was a nice callback, I thought. That was a nice callback. Yeah. So yeah, but you know that, that I, I, I at one point it's like okay, okay. So he's now he's he's doing press ups. Now he's running around the circles. Now he's doing press ups. Now he's throwing a shield. And it's interesting. I basically hit the hit throwing a shield, and almost every single time he's taking his head off. Oh <laughs> my god! Throwing. Like literally, I literally ducked for him because I'm like, watch out. But it also shows that basically how much control Steve had over the shield. But mm -hmm. um, <laughs> literally seen him duck, <laughs> basically almost just taking out, trying to basically do nothing more than trying to do a rebound shot, uh, which oddly enough he was doing okay with Bucky. But basically, because he's trying, I think he's throwing it a lot faster to basically mm -hmm. be more effective with it. Uh, so, but um, it was just interesting to see that basically doing his, his acrobatic stuff and that type of thing to basically grab the shield and that. And he finally gets the timing right and he gets stronger and more mm -hmm. press off and more running. And he finally gets the timing right and how to catch figures out how to catch, start catching the shield so it doesn't take take him apart. And um, so we, 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 we see, I thought it was a very effective, effective and con it was him basically gaining confidence in his abilities and confidence in using the shield. Mm -hmm. And the confidence to basically carry the legacy. And this is basically is that there's a lot of legacy and a lot of lot of basically honoring your history or remembering your history in mm -hmm. this show. 
Um, and I think this is basically a, a demonstration of physically getting stronger, but physically being okay with picking up the shield and using it. Yeah, I agree. And then he um, is going to get a chance to use that shield because um, the Flag Smashers uh, attack the GRC uh, meeting where they're holding a vote. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, we see him open up the Wakandan case, but we don't see the suit yet. So. I'm going to see it. So, yeah, I, I know you're kind of hoping to see it too, right? So <laughs> it's like... So me, but so. they did give us a little extra. I like Iron Man, you know, origin story beginning thing. Oh, we will to end with Walker. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, and for first he's hammering his own shield out, and you hear that hammering sound in the exact like same tones. End game. Exact same tones. Exact same rhythm. As basically, I am making making the first mm -hmm. Iron Man suit. Uh, so basically, it was like saying, and he's making. I don't know what he's making the damn thing out of, but we do know that he's, he's putting his he's putting his medals into the shield. So yeah, it, it seems that way. It seems to look that way. Yeah, it like, does seem to look that way. He is he is Captain America. If even in his own mind, he is Captain America. <laughs> I think in his own mind, and Walker, Walker, it, it largely believes that he is Captain America as well. Even though basically, uh, at one point, he has the mantle physically taken off him, and actually Walker has here. So he's basically going. It's interesting to see this evolution. That basically, he's making his own shield, and he's going to carry on regardless because he feels like this is his mission now. Mm -hmm. So, um, and no, well, he's definitely on a mission. He is not going to stop now. He is. He's just going. He's a train, and he don't. He's going right over that cliff, baby. He's going to go right off that cliff, leading us right into episode six, which is going to have so much, so much lifting to go, lift story lifting to do, and basically fight scenes and all kinds of stuff. Because we know all, all of them, all our heroes, all our protagonists, all our antagonists are going to basically have have a throwdown. We know that's going to happen. In, oh, in yeah. Grand Marvel to do. The trailers and. Some of what we know, we know there's going to be the Flag Smashers. They're in New York. They've attacked, you know, this meeting. That truck's with them, too. Don't forget that. Yeah, that truck's with them, too. You know Falcon, Sam's coming. You know Bucky's showing up. You know, <laughs> you know Walker's coming. And it's just going to be one big boof. There's gonna one big. There's gonna be one big, big, big fight here, um, and yeah, we know Walker, Sam, and Bucky are gonna be there. We know the Flag Smashers are. I think it's like four, four or five of them left now, and Carlos there, and Batroc's gonna be there too. And Batroc is a pretty, pretty mean guy. Um, so um, we're in for an interesting, in, interesting episode six. I'm definitely gonna be seeing a big fight. Um, I don't know how it's all gonna end for everybody, but uh, you got any predictions? I mean, I feel like it's a good possibility John Walker's going to end up on the raft with Zemo. Could be. I, I'm not disagreeing with that one. I think we're going to see Falcon and maybe Falcon and Torres team up and Bucky maybe go off and do things for Wakanda. Mm, maybe, maybe, okay. Maybe because, well, because he, uh, it's obvious he did something when he was there for them to call. To, they don't just call him the White Wolf just because. Oh he's no, they, 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 they don't give they don't give the technology away just because either. So. No, he's earned that, and them giving helping him, you know undo his training and, and brainwashing and giving him this arm and stuff. I have no doubt in repayment that he probably did special op missions and stuff and, and, and helped them. Yeah, I think he definitely worked with the Dora Mishra. I definitely worked with Ayo. Ayo. Mm -hmm. I'll never get that name right. Uh, and they, I think they might have done special Wakanda op missions. Basically, it's usually, Wakanda missions are usually involved recovering a vibranium. So that should be very, that should be very interesting. So, so you have any more predictions for episode six? 
I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what they're setting uh, setting us up for next. Maybe um, Secret Invasion. Maybe. I, I, there's a good chance that I think I think they're setting us up for more of a Dark Avengers arc myself, but we'll see. Anyhow, I've got I've got a couple of predictions. So you want to help? Hit me with them. Hit you with my predictions. First off, yeah, um, I think Walker is heading to the raft. Um, um, but uh, that's probably near the end of, you know, end of the episode here. There's going to be a big fight, fight, fight with the Flag Smashers. The Flag Smashers are going to get their asses kicked because, um, unfortunately, at the end of the day, there are still civilians that have not been trained to be soldiers. Though so Batroc is going to do some pretty, pretty, pretty big damage, I think. Um, but I think this is how it's, this is how, it's, I think it's, this is how it's going to th- how I feel it's going to throw down. We're going to see the debut of Sam as the as new Captain America with these the, the new Wakandan battle suit, which basically will give some enhancement sparks. That it's made out of vibranium, so he's going to get the wings back. We know he's going to get the jetpack back. We know he's going to, and he's going to have some enhancement through this this battle suit that's going to help help him become a more effective cap. Um, I believe. Carla is going to have a little bit of a redemption arc in this. I think she's going to stop Batroc from killing Sam. I believe that's going to happen. There's a possibility. I was just thinking as you were talking yeah. that it's possible that um, maybe John kills Carly. Could be. I, I don't I, think that. I think John's going to try to kill Carly. Uh, Sam's going to stop him, um, but Batroc's going to try to kill Sam, and Carly's going to return, return the, uh, uh, the 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 one for a better word. Um, I'm having and, a good she could be maybe the next Nomad. No, I don't think so. I, I don't. I honestly don't feel Carly's going to survive. Um, I think I think she's going to die, stopping Batroc from killing Sam. Oh, no. She's she's an extremist, and basically, you know, this it's, 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 it's is going to be like a redemption arc for her. And basically, but she got, she will go down burning for her beliefs. Remember, the serum enhances what's inside you. Mm-hmm. Um, Do you think her friend, the one friend, is going to turn on her? Maybe he's he looks like he's he's starting to not he's starting to not basically want following. But yeah, I don't think he believes as much as Carla believes. Mm-hmm. So. We, 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 but we will see, we'll see what happens there. I, know, I think it's got to be a bigger role because he's now he's now starting to pop up in GMA as like a character connected to the Falcon and Winter Soldier as like a a, a, a interviewee character. I think he's got a little bit more going for him at the moment. Um, so the, I think they're going to have the big fight. Um, there's going to be there's going to be some collateral damage. I think Carla's going to die. I think the Flag Smashers are pretty much dead. Um, Batroc's going to get captured again. Uh, Walker is going to get arrested. And he's going to go to the raft, I believe. Um, or basically, he gets arrested, but he ends up in a helicopter with the Contessa, and may- maybe they'll go off to form the mm-hmm. US, U.S. Avengers or Secret Warriors or something along those lines. We don't know. Um, we know Captain Bucky is going to talk to uh, Nakajima at some point in episode six, maybe near the end. And oh, I don't yeah, know how. That, I don't. That, know. That, yeah, that's definitely going to happen. I don't think that's basically going to be anger, tears, whatever. We don't know, but we know we know this is coming. This is basically Bucky, Bucky's circle in in in, in his story arc here. Um, I'd like to see Bucky take Sarah out for a date. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe who knows? Um, it would be nice to see the old man actually, you know, start dating again. Um, mm-hmm. We're going to find. I think we're going to find out who Sharon works for. And I think it's connected to the Contessa as well. So we're going to find out who they work for. Uh, I think we're going to find a bit more about the power broker, but I honestly don't think we're going to see who the power broker is. Um, it's because Zolo. He's not Zolo. He's Mephisto, but you know anything. And um, But I also think we're going, to, we're going to get set up set up for another season of Falcon Winter Soldier because this has actually been a much better series than people thought it was going to be. And I think is you know they throw these things out. They throw these series out here. As, I think planned as basically being like one shot things and one shots. But if they get any success, they may do a, may may, may plant the seeds to do second ones. And I think the Falcon and Winter Soldier is definitely worthy of a second season, if not anything to help. I would love to see another season. Yeah, I would too. If not anything to basically establish Sam Moore as basically Captain America before mm-hmm. it's not going to Avengers. I 
threat and that sort of thing. Um, so there's, there's a lot more threats out there they can deal with as well, which I think it, it, it has been a thriller. It's been an espionage show. It has been a show about legacy and injustice. So they, they can really turn each one of these, these episodes into something very, very different. Uh, but yeah, so that, that, that those are my predictions. I think we, we, we're we going to see Walker go to his next journey. We're going to see Bucky get closure in Nakajima, with Nakajima. Sam is going to be basically emerging as the new Cap, which is going to be fantastic. Carla, unfortunately, is going to die. Uh, and we're going to find out who Sharon and the Contessa work for and why that's, that, why that, why that, that, why that's going to become more and more important. So, I'm pretty much on board with that. Oh. Hang on, I've had a thought. Give me a second. Uh, uh oh, is there is there a, a theory brewing? It's a theory brewing, and I'm thinking, and it just popped into my head a second ago, because nobody's thinking this direction because people are basically uh, are fixating on these, these type of characters. The power broker, if they reveal him, which I don't think they're going to, by the way. And I'm thinking about Dark Avengers and Thunderbolts and all that type of stuff because I know mm -hmm. this, I know this character leads the Thunderbolts at one point and does lead the Dark Avengers at one point as well and basically forms. I mean, maybe his the own... man runs the power broker. Uh, no, no, uh, and basically forms his own spy agency called Hammer. I think the power broker could be. Are you ready for this? I already know where you're going. Norman Osborn. Osborn. Yes, he of Green Goblin fame. Norman Osborn. Osborn. Now there's a rogue theory. Yeah. Has anybody, come, has anybody come, up, come up with that in any of the shows that you've basically been watching recently? I haven't heard anybody. I don't I don't think I've heard any uh, anybody say uh, Osborn yet. So, hey there, folks. You've heard it here first at the Nick and Jean show. We've solved the mystery of the power broker for you. It is Norman Osborn. Woo! We solved Woo! it. They were about that one, eh? So, those are my predictions. And, and if it turns out to be true, sorry, spoilers. Sorry, spoilers. Just to remind you, everybody, I have a very good, very good, very good hit rate on these things. So. And lastly, tonight, um, of course, we got to talk about Invincible before we leave. My goodness, who's seen it? We've been going for an hour and 20 minutes so far. Are you guys being entertained out there? I hope you are. Oh. Yes. Um, at the rate the Invincible um, title card is going, like <laughs> every episode, just more and more and more blood. More and more blood splatters, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's certainly getting a bit messy. Um, this was, uh, to my mind, a very much a recovery episode. I mean, we, we saw Mark get his beat down, but basically mm -hmm. he was always killed by whatever that character was with the the lion's head. I don't know who he is. He may go. He may have got in, introduced in the last episode of a name, but I can't remember it. So, um, and it sounds like basically this beatdown has basically tried to convince try to convince Mark to be, convince Mark to basically he doesn't really want to be a superhero. He wants to basically have a normal life for a while. Mm -hmm. um, so, but Mark does survive and recover from his his beatdown. Spoilers. Um, but we knew he was kind of doing that anyway. But it's kind of touch and go a little bit there. I thought for, for a while because they weren't too sure if he was. But he starts, basically, his body starts healing itself because uh, Voltarium, Voltarium, and bodies do that. Um, does some of them get, get the shit kicked out of them? But uh, they do seem to heal pretty fast. Um, so yeah, I think I think this episode is more, more of a personal what the character is going to do next. It's like a breath before storm type episode. Um, so he, he Mark goes off to, go to the college with his girlfriend and his best friend, and of course, as as will happen, you know, when you're a superhero and you try to live a normal life, there's a villain. There's always a villain. It's like it's like the, it's like the biggest trope ever in a superhero comic. You go somewhere, they're basically going, "Hey, I'm gonna go somewhere that's absolutely nothing to do with me." And there's always there's always a villain there. And there's usually some kind of crazy psychopath making deadly deadly cyborgs out of basically alpha males in the kind of college campus. Like you do. Like you do. Um, but yeah, it, that that was that was like you know, horrifying in itself because you know we William went to uh, went to New York New, New, NYC to basically uh, meet that guy. Um, can't remember his name now. Can you? They went there to meet um, his Mark's 
best friend's boyfriend. Mark's best friend's boyfriend. Uh, we've got to scroll down because we can't remember his name. Um, and uh, so it was kind of weird because we did. Brad? We kind of like it. Brad? Could be, I don't think it was Brad. That feels, that feels a little too too frat boys. But you generally just, you generally just kind of like the guy. So that's actually, that's actually really good. That's good. But we also knew, oh my God, he's going to be the next the next robotic cyborg. And um, yeah, that, 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 was, that, that, was, that was very interesting there. We saw Atom Eve basically go off to Africa to basically solve the world, world's problems. Oh, yeah. Uh, that, that was interesting. Like, you know, her parents were like, you ain't going. She was like, Pfft. can't stop me. Watch me. <laughs> Watch me go. Um, yeah. so, but uh, so she's off to basically solve those problems. It's gonna be ha, ha, that's gonna be her arc, for, arc I think, for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, it's definitely a weird connection between robot, robot, and Monster Girl. Almost kind of creepy, I thought. Um, oh yeah, he's got, and he's got, he has clones. Oh, he's growing. Clones. He has these other clones because one of them brings back the flower that helps heal her. Well, he calls them drones. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah his dr- yeah the drone. So he says, and he says basically it was like you know it was like he that basically it was a fight to get this flower. So. But yeah, I think I think he, he he's growing a body so he can inhabit it so he can be with her. I think. So you think he's basically growing a human body for himself? Mm-hmm. I think that's what he's doing. I think it's a good possibility. Because he, want, he wants to be with her, and that way he and can also, be with her. also, explain him taking mm-hmm. Rexplode as blood, because mm-hmm. Rexplode basically has this, you know, seems to attract women all the time. So. And speaking of blood. Blood. Yeah. Um, okay. Omni-Man discovers that his suit's missing. No, he, he discovers his suit's missing, yeah, yeah. So Nolan, who's Omni-Man, um, Nolan yeah, Grayson. Nolan. We should call him. We should probably try to call him by his name a little bit. Yeah, Nolan, his wife Debbie, yep. goes to the dry cleaners. To the tailor. <laughs> to the tailor. To and... confirms her, confirms her theory that she she read from basically the demon's notebook that basically um, Nolan killed everybody. Killed the global guardians. Uh, yep. The guardians of the globe. That's it. Sorry. Um, and of course, um, he are, he's outside, up in the air, looking down, and knows that she's there. He's there, listening in. Yep, uh, definitely is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that itself is kind of, it's kind of creepy. Like he's flying around all, 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 all the place, but uh, you know, it kind of cuts out there. And he basically goes goes to the tailor, the tailor, and we think, and we're thinking, oh my god, he's going to kill him because the tailor's. Found, oh, found I, I thought for, I thought any second he's just gonna you know go over there and just. Take his head off. Just, just take his head off. Just, 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 flick, just one flick of his finger. There, there goes the tail. Yeah, and um, and he, he, he turns up turns up with, 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 with that beard to drink at the rooftop of the tail. And the tail is literally pissing himself the entire... Uh, he's waiting oh to be killed. Oh, my God. Yeah. So. He's like, uh, nothing wrong right now. I'm just tired. I'm just tired. Scared to death any second now. You're going to kill me because I'm too scared to basically tell anybody your secret anyway. Because mm-hmm. I know what you can, I know what you're capable of, uh, and I know now. Yeah. I, basically I don't think I don't think he's going to kill him because that'll just make it worse. I don't. I think I think the tailor's not going to get killed, but the tailor the tailor's already said that basically he's not going to tell anybody because he's just too shit scared. Yeah. He's gonna so I don't think him. he's going to even. It's not even worth his time. No, I don't think it's worth his time. I think I think he, he in his sociopathic way, uh, no one basically you know made sure the tailor knew that he knew. But Debbie has definitely let Nolan know that she knows now. Oh yeah, a bit, a bit, a bit of wine feud rage, um, and she let Nolan know that he, he, she knows that he's the killer. Don't know how that's mm-hmm. going to end for her right now, but um, he, he didn't fly off his handle. He seemed like you know, I think honest to God, he loves her so much he can't even harm her. But so. I don't know. How, I don't know how that's gonna. I don't honestly know how it's gonna end because Mark's got to come back from New York. It's got to come back. Come back from New York at some point. So I don't think he loves her. I think he's a, a narcissistic um, sociopath. Well, true. That's probably very true there. But I also I do honestly believe that he loves her as well. And I don't because he could have easily lost his shit. There goes Debbie. Yeah, but then he would have to explain that to Mark. True. True. But we don't know. That's going on in his in his head, anyway, because we don't know anything and about this book. Way and he it would look way too, you know, 
Yeah, I know, I know. But yeah, so yeah, so Mark basically, um, you know, gets and ends up ends up in basically at, at, at NU, NYC, basically fighting killer killer cyborgs that are basically made out of the alpha males by this uh, mad scientist, more for a better word. Uh, which basically, unfortunately, uh, William, who is Mark's friend, um, William's friend gets turned into a, one of those killer cyborgs too, uh, and they are really they're kicking Mark's ass. His ass is getting absolutely fucking. Clobbered mm -hmm. by these cyborgs, he basically he's getting rearranged that sort of thing. Now, I will say at this point, Invincible is not feeling very invincible because he's still recovering from his 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 last beat down, so he's mm -hmm. not fully healed. So I don't think he was like, he was at full invincible power, um, but he was he was really getting his ass kicked kick, kick by the cyborgs. And it's interesting that basically William basically kept his head enough to basically uh, get through to his boyfriend to basically. Get that helmet off him, and someone someone pull a plug out his back of his head to deprogram himself a little bit. Mm -hmm. I pretty much saves Mark's life. So. Oh yeah. Uh, but um, what I thought is that was interesting as well is when basically Cecil gets called in to basically clean up the clean up the mess, and he mm -hmm. basically is looking at the technology this mad scientist guy uh, basically cobbled together, and he goes, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they give you they give you a what they just gave you a one for their money. And they did it with just basically this cobbled together sewer tech. You know he's thinking, can he can he use this guy to build an army of these using the technology that he has at his his availability as a backup to basically mm -hmm. take out Nolan slash Omni Man. I'm right there with you. I think that's exactly what he's thinking. He's gonna take this guy, he's gonna repair him, give him medical care, get him good and going, and give him whatever he needs. And and to to help him make some more to help yeah. take down Omni Man because we've seen basically he's put that ki the kaiju on, on ice that can t basically almost took mm -hmm. out Omni Man. He's mm -hmm. basically experimenting with Mark's blood to see how they can mm -hmm. basically use that to take that take him out. And they're mm -hmm. also basically now got, now he's beginning this like you know over tear together to basically these are all contingency plans for the moment that basically they can't contain Nolan anymore. Or Nolan decides mm -hmm. he doesn't want to be contained. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, oh, hang on. I think we've got a message. Ooh. It's from Geico K. Hey, K. Set at 9.31. Do we, should, should we play and see what K's going to say? Yes. Okay, K, we're playing your message, mate. Uh, oh, thank you, K. Hey, Glad you, uh, glad you basically uh, joined in there. Thanks for your opinion. Appreciate it. Um, Everybody's opinion is appreciated. Anyhow. And sometimes ignored because sometimes it can be. <laughs> so, um, but. But yes, um, it was a really good episode. It was a really, I thought it was a really good, like, Breath Before the Storm episode. It's, it's setting characters in different different areas here. Uh, Black Samson um, seems to have got his powers back. Um, mm -hmm. Who knew basically a massive electrical, electrical discharge from basically a defibrillator would do that to him? But now we do. Um, so he's got his powers back, which seems, seems to be a good thing as well. Um, so you got these characters, they're rearranging the pieces a little bit. Um, we definitely can see that basically Cecil has put together a plan to basically take out Omni Man. Debbie knows that Nolan slash Omni Man is basically um, the killer. Uh, Mark doesn't know shit because he's 18 years old and doesn't. You know, mm -hmm. Adam Eve's on the next stage, whatever she's going to be doing. Robot Man's doing something very creepy. The uh, the twins, the clone twin guys, the Mauler twins, I think that's the they call the Maulers or something mm -hmm. like that, are doing something with that body to ensure, to ensure that basically, you know, they get some leverage over, over robots. They, they're digging up the immortal. And those kids are digging up, digging up the immortal, right? Yeah. So. Will the immortal come back to life? I got a funny feeling they're going to be doing something with the immortal, trying to resurrect them. Well, you know what? It's not necessarily a bad thing because, again, it leads back to Cecil basically trying to find out his contingency plans to basically stop Nolan. And the immortal is like the the, the analog to basically Superman in the global guardi in the guardian, global, the guardians of the globe. So um, maybe, you know, they, they, maybe they, they can resurrect him, they can get back in being a superhero, they have another th uh, person who can almost fight Nolan at the same level. Well, I'm thinking the two goons that are digging up the that go to get the immortal, I'm the thinking twins. that yeah, I think that 
maybe they're going to resurrect him and maybe put one of their minds in that body. Could and then that will be there, you know, will help them fight the robot or whoever else they need to fight if they don't get their money that they want. Yeah, so I guess we'll find out that what will happen there. Um, but yeah, so we, we, it's been another. I say it's been a great. It was another good episode. Um, I think that um, you know, I love not knowing what's going to happen next. Um, I love not knowing yeah, any of these characters and basically being on this journey and and learning these, ca these characters and everybody else knows about characters. Plus, means we can speculate a little bit too. Um, I don't think it's going to be long before Mark finds out now, and I think him and his father are going to have a bit of a throwdown. Yeah, I think that, that's going to be coming, and I think we're going to be finding out um, soon what what um, uh, Nolan and his planet and his people, uh, I think there's a little more to it than he's said. I think there is, too. Just based uh, on his attitude. Yeah, and... Um, and so Feeling of the, the superiority complex he has. Yes, yes, I mean, he, I mean we do know that basically he doesn't see himself to protect us, whether the uh, the conqueror of Earth. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So, but yeah, so it's 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 another it was another good episode. Uh, I, I I really like the feeling of uneasiness that basically J.K. Simmons is basically doing the voice acting with um with with, with Nolan. Uh, oh, you, he's killing it. You, you generally do feel uneasy every time you see Nolan on the screen, uh, and, mm -hmm. and J.K. Simmons basically voice acting is is absolutely amazing at this point because he's doing it basically not through expressions of the character because he can't put because of expressions of the character, but through basically his voice and the it, it subtly changes tone, mm -hmm. and you know, and you get you just getting creeped out now. Oh I mean, yeah. Before we had this, he had this authoritarian, strong, almost paternal voice at the mm -hmm. very beginning. Before we learned what Omni Man was, and now it's like it's it's it, it's creeps you. you. You're expecting to basically, you know, any second now he's going to break and start you know, just tearing people in half because we oh, want yeah. to see him do that. So, no, I can't wow. wait to see the next episode. What happens? I can't. Um, use, yeah. It's gonna be fun. I don't know. Do we know how many episodes are left in, uh, or in the season? I don't. I have no idea. Okay, Which makes it even we'll... more exciting. So I don't know if there's one more or five more. I have no idea. Well, it's an animation, so uh, we may go to six. We may go to twelve. Who knows? Um, I guess. We, I guess we'll find. Out. I don't think they're gonna to go to twenty-four. I don't think. No. I don't think. I don't think we're gonna. We're gonna get above twelve. Honestly. Uh, but I guess we're gonna, we're going to find out. This journey of unknown is a good thing. Between six and probably ten, maybe. Nine, maybe. Nine's a good maybe. number. Yeah, I think nine's a good number too. Okay, um, that's it for this, I believe. Um, yeah. And that's all for this week, nerdlings. Um, hey, you've been entertained. I can't hear you. Are you been entertained? Woot woot woot. In a house, in the house. Sorry. Good night, G. Uh, if you enjoy night, our nerdy ramblings, then please be a peach and make sure to like and subscribe. You can find the Nick and Jean Show wherever you digest your podcasts. And please be sure to leave a kind review. Please, please do. And this has been an Alt World Studios production. You all take care now. Good night. Good night.